Hello and welcome to Jessie James Beads. Whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube or on the blog, my name is Gem and I'm here to talk to you about the beautiful mini bead mix called Vibrant Iris. Now Vibrant Iris is available at the US store, which is www.jessiejamesbeads.com, but it's also available here in Blighty at www.jessiejamesbeadsuk.com. How lovely is it that we can grab hold of some of these beautiful for Jesse James goodies here in the UK without any extra kerfuffle. I'd like to show you the bead mix to begin with and a little sneaky peek at the project we're going to work up together today. So this is the bead mix as you receive it. I've just taken the lid off so you can see the insane variety of bits and bobs and beauties that we get in here. They are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So in terms of what I've added to the project today, I've got a couple of crimps, a couple of crimp covers some beading thread. So I've just got a little length here cut already. It could be almost any beading thread that you like. And I've also got a couple of Jesse James beads clasp endings. So I've got a toggle finding there. So the main techniques that we're going to learn today are these different charms. Now it's a huge variety, so if you wanted to you can just pick and choose from which ones you like the best, or you could make symmetrical ones, or you could do something a bit different, it's absolutely up to you. There's loads and loads of beads to work with, loads and loads of beautiful things in the blend that you can make into different looking charms, you can make them as earrings, I've strung them all together as a bracelet, you can make this entire project with one pot of beads and still have leftovers. Let me just see if I can find you what I had left over from making this project after I used one of these pots. I've still got all these teeny tiny little beads here which make a great sound. So those are always wonderful for spacing out and adding on. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago I showed you the halo effect in one of our projects together? So those are the perfect beads to add into halo projects. I also had all of these beads left as well, which I'm going to demonstrate with some of those today, which is why I've just got them put to one side. You get a massive quantity squashed into, they call it a mini mix. Is it a mini mix though? It is Vibrant Iris though, absolutely stunning piece. Do you want to have a closer look at some of those beads? Ah, will they all go back in the pot? They will not all go back in the pot. I just know that they won't, but never mind. So you do get a beautiful variety of beads from these frankly vast, I want to say spacer beads, but they're not really. It's a focal by itself. It's an AB coated rondelle with super flat sides, superb faceted crystal. You get two of these massive feature beads, which you may have seen similar to on some of the Pantone strands in the past. They are definitely a work of art. I'm going to pop those back in as I go. You've also got these faceted, definitely rondelle shaped, but gorgeous, gorgeous, vibrant colours on those. And there's the matching pair. You get these bell shaped bead caps. These are absolutely perfect. Very, very floral, almost Egyptian. Love those. You get four of those. That one's trying to run away from me, which is par for the course. You get four of these fabulous, almost like dagger beads absolutely gorgeous by themselves just a couple of those on a head pin or a homemade head pin variant pair of earrings in seconds those are fabulous these are gorgeously festive so they are set with a loop on one side really really beautiful it's almost a moroccan theme if if you think of it in that way which i often do they're gorgeous i think you get four of those yes you do which I, you could add on to other parts of the bracelet if you wanted to. You've got these almost opalescent, huge lilac toned, it feels like opalite glass, which is a treated glass to have that opalescent effect to it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous bead. There's those, you've got cubes. I think there are four cubes. You've got these fabulous faceted, now I don't know what the shape is called. In its essence, it's like a rondelle, but it's much, much more than that because you've got a series of different facets on this. It's almost like a, a high-end cut gem that you would put into absolutely luxurious jewellery. You've got a drop here, one of these frilly fellas. Very beautiful floral designs. They're lovely. 
really really feminine and you've got these very very cool elongated rectangle or oblate beads oblong beads you get I can't even count them there's a bunch of them and then all of these as well as your usual array there's another one of those bell shaped bead caps you've got spaces with rhinestones you've got these absolutely delightful ones as well which are sort of half coated with an AB coating which gives them a really magnificent feel and I adore these as well absolutely gorgeous every single one of them so you can see you've got more bead caps rondelles micro facets tiggy tiggy gloriously vibrant iris themed beads so i'm just going to pop those back out of the way will they go in the pot will they heck very very unlikely they might have to go in a different container for now so let's just scooch those over and whoosh some of them went into the pot some of them did not Never mind, I will pick those up later. So we have got this beautiful project to work up together. And as I said, you don't have to make all of them. You don't have to recreate the entire thing. You can pick and choose what you want to work with based on your own design aesthetics. Even just one of these with the supporting beads going around would be a beautiful charm bracelet. And you can add from your stash as you desire. So let's have a look at some of those projects together. Let's get this wooden bead mat out of the way. And shall we start at this end? So I'm using two wires today for our tutorial. I've made the project up in a medium temper silver colour round wire because I think it works incredibly well with the vibrant iris aesthetic. However, I'm as ever going to demonstrate for you using a variety of copper wires simply because it shows up on the camera better. So I'm going to cut a length of the 18 gauge which is equivalent to one millimeter in the UK and some of the 20 gauge which is equivalent to 0.8 millimeter in the UK. Now with these designs the basic idea is that you use the broadest wire you can use in your chosen bead project. Some beads have slightly narrower apertures which means you will need to use a little bit of that lighter gauge wire. So let's start down here. So we're going to need one of those beautiful floral little drops. I, I just can't help but um, yeah they're lovely. <laughs> we're also going to use one of those very iridescent rounds. Gorgeous drill hole in those, really useful. I've spied that I'm going to add in one of the wheel spacers with rhinestones and one of the rice shape beads. Now it may be that this is the one that will not go on the heavier wire. I can't remember. No, that's correct. So we're going to use the 20 gauge for our first project. So I'm just going to smooth that between thumb and forefinger and I've cut around about 15 inches of wire to work on various projects. If you prefer, you can work from the reel and then you'll have much less wastage. However, I'm going to continue to use this entire length of wire until I've gone through all of it as much as I possibly can. So we're going to minimize wastage. What I'm going to do though is imagine that the reel is connected over here on the left hand side and I'm going to thread my beads from the right. Obviously, if you're left-handed, simply invert so that you're moving in the opposite direction so that your dominant hand is doing the work that you need it to. So the rice bead goes on first, then we're adding one of the rhinestone spacers. I'm going to sit that up so that the rice bead nestles away in the little dimple that you get on either side. And then I'm going to add in one of those beautiful iridescent rounds. So when you smush those up together, we're going to do wrapped loops on either end of this. Once you've smushed those up together, it sits almost perfectly so that it, it kind of looks machined and that's what it's designed to do. So around about an inch from one end, I'm going to pop a right angle in like so. And then I'm going to use my round nose pliers to create that loop shape. So I tend to do mine in two manoeuvres. Let's just move that wire around a second. So I get the shepherd's crook shape done first. Then I put my pliers back into position 
and draw the tail of wire all the way around. Now that is purely because it's more accessible for people who are newer to wire to work in that fashion. Once you've got that loop shape into position, I mean, if, if you want to do that all in one go, then go for it. It depends on your confidence and comfort level with wire. So I've added on my flowery drop charm into the loop shape that we created through the gap where the one tail wire crosses over the round shape. What I'm going to do then is to support the loop shape, not squashing down where the flower dangle is and not squashing where wires cross over. And then I'm going to draw the wire around. Now, if you're used to working with 18 gauge to do wrapped loops, what you'll find is if you switch that down to a 20 gauge, it will be so much easier, you may become addicted. One thing I would say is when you're working with a slightly lighter gauge of wire, whereas with a heavier gauge wire, I might go for one and a half to two turns, when I'm using a lighter wire, such as the 20 gauge, equivalent to 0.8, I'm going to add another wrap. So I've gone for three wraps here, utilizing that inch or so of tail. Now I'm just going to support these so that they don't fall onto the floor because that is a risk trim that tail away and pop it in the scrap pot for recycling. So what you will need to do with your wrapped loop is just take that tail, squash it down a bit and make that neat and tidy before you bring your beads into position. Now you can see that mine has gone sideways. So what I'll do is I'll take a moment just to straighten everything up, careful of your beads, just bring that back into position to sit it in a straight line. What we're going to do is a 90 degree opposing wrapped loop up at the top. You can do it in the same orientation as I have done here, or you can do that at 90 degrees. It depends what you want to see when you're looking at the charm sideways. So if I just bring the example down into position for a second, you can see both loops on this segment are facing in the same orientation. It gives it a very streamlined look from the front. As an alternative, which I'm going to show you now, I'm going to do one which is sideways at the bottom and straight on at the top. It's entirely up to you. I'll show you those side by side in a second. So I've done a right angle bend, which is in the opposite orientation to the loop down at the base. As I say, the choice is entirely yours as to which way you want to work with that. I've got a long tail of wire over here, which I'm just trying to avoid wastage with. So you probably won't have that all in your way, but all we're going to do is repeat in opposition what you did earlier, which is another wrapped loop, like so. Take the tail all the way around. Now you can have quite a teeny loop up at the top because all that's got to do is go on your chosen threading material. Let me see if I've got a closed reel to show you the type of material I'm using. Yeah, I do have one here. Just dropped my glove on the floor. Let's pick that out of the way. So this is the one that I'm working with today, which is a Beadalon 7 strand. It's 0.018 inch which is quite tidgy when you think about it, but it's very, very strong and flexible in a silver tone or brilliant, brilliant bright. So that's what I'm using. If you want to replicate that, you don't have to. You can use whatever threading material you like, as long as your beads of choice, all of these beads, go onto that neatly. So to finish off, as I say, as long as the loop you've made up at the top is large enough to go around your chosen threading material, we're going to fill in up at the top with some wraps mindful of your bead don't nick that i've made that slightly baggy so i'm just going to show you how to tighten that up just draw those loops together we might take that across the back before we trim away what you can do if you don't want to work off a great big length of wire like this you can take smaller lengths of wire and that would probably have used up maybe three inches about three inches of wire but then you will have some residue to cut away and you may not wish to do you may wish to have a zero as close to zero waste as you possibly can and there we go so just tidy those ends up and then you have your opposing at 90 degrees loop let me bring the other one back down so you can see the difference if i put them side by side when the loop sits onto the strand of your bracelet it will sit in this orientation so you can either have it the same direction as we have showing in this one or you can have it in opposing direction as we have shown you in the copper so that's entirely up to you that's our first example of a charm all done so i'm going to pop that up to one side 
Let's see if we can knock that flying in a moment because that's usually what happens when I'm demonstrating with you. So our next one is going to again use one of these wheel spacer beads with rhinestones. Let's see if I can find all the beads I need. It's going to take one of these iridescent rounds which are gorgeous. We're also going to use a single one of these ultra fine bead caps. Now you don't have to replicate the order. What I'm trying to show you here is how to create charms you can play around with the order of beads to your heart's content just sit there and stop being fussy so for this one you can either use a head pin or you can generate your own head pin so again i'm imagining that this is connected to a great big long reel of wire what i might do is just coil this up slightly to replicate the reel of wire it is possible to work from a reel when you're creating designs like this to minimize wastage what we're going to do though is from the cut end now you can see there's a bit of a kink on there i want to straighten that up slightly to make getting the beads on easier so we're going to start with the bead cap going on inversely so you've got the smooth side going towards the reel of wire then we're going to add in our beautiful iridescent round squish that up so it sits inside the bead cap then we've gone for a spacer and then we've gone for one of these it's very much like opalite i don't know if it is what we're going to do is allow those beads to just sit on the wire out of the way for a moment and we're going to create our very own version of a head pin so if you don't have head pins to hand here's how you can make something similar yourself so this would be the equivalent of a disc head pin so you've got a circular form down at the bottom there so the first thing we're going to do is start by coiling up a double coil of wire so you can see i start with my round nose pliers and then switch to my flat pliers and what i do is i push the coil into the forefinger of my non-dominant hand until i can reach two circuits of wire now contrary to what we normally do with coils after i've given that a bit of a squish what i'm going to do is draw the wire up and at 90 degrees rather than in this direction it's at 90 degrees to that little disc that we've created and then what I'm going to do is to support the coils we've made and draw the length of wire down over the surface so that it heads towards the center, the start point. Not quite all the way there. And then what we need to do, having fine tipped pliers is really helpful at this stage, is pull the wire up and away. So you've created a disc, you've taken the wire passing back across the center of your coiled disc, I'm just going to squish that down now bring that slightly closer up it will be blurry but you'll be able to see where we're going and then the wire comes up and away so you've created like a disc head pin and I'm just going to straighten that out you can perfectly centralize that cut that uh, bend if you want to just by playing around with where the pliers sit the technique is exactly the same so the wire is now coming away at 90 degrees from that coiled center and we're going to bring those beads back into play that we threaded earlier on so scooch those all the way down and again i would urge you to play around with whatever type of bead order you want to once your beads are sitting in position you can just press that disc until it sits neatly along the base of your bottom bead here and again it's just a wrapped loop up at the top now what i don't want to do is bore you senseless by doing wrapped loop after wrapped loop so i'm just going to whiz through this one i hope you're all having a beautiful day no matter what it is you're doing today i'm so delighted to be working with jesse james beads purple is my absolute favorite color of all time and vibrant iris is most definitely one of my favorite mini bead mixes it's absolutely gorgeous so i've shown you the uh wrapped loop there but i haven't talked through it again because it's very dull to repeat the same thing over and over again so there's our second charm all ready to add on to our bracelet a little bit later on i'm just going to scooch these over to the side because otherwise they are going to hit the floor at some point so that's our first two techniques down utilizing the vibrant iris mini bead mix so happy to have that available here in the uk on jesse james beads uk.com also shipping out to europe from the united kingdom 
fabulous collection in my favourite colours. We've got some more techniques to learn. As I said before, you don't need to recreate the whole thing, but hopefully you'll find something in these techniques that you might wish to use as earrings, as charms, as even main focal pendants. If you like quite a diminutive pendant, it's a great range of techniques to learn because you can use them for all sorts of absolutely fantastic earrings as well. And when there's so much that gets squashed into a tiny mini bead mix, it's really easy to be able to make lots and lots of jewellery from one pot. Let's move on to our next segment now. So this is the technique we're going to be utilising next, which has three components from the bead mop, uh, from the bead mix rather. I'm going to use one of these beautiful rondelle pluses, one of the gorgeous floral bell caps, and then also one of these like a little sultry exotic lamp in a North African bazaar or suck or something similar. We're going to be working with a slightly heavier gauge wire now and again if you wanted to imagine that this was connected to the reel so that you can reduce your wastage I'm going to put a hook on one end and we're going to work from the other cut end only. So what we're going to do is pre-thread two of our component parts. The first is that lovely exotic looking rondelle and then the bead cap itself. So what we're going to do now is come maybe two inches from the end of that cut wire and I'm going to put a very sharp bend that comes all the way back on itself. We'll be able to find that up in just a second after we've added in that beautiful drop charm. Once that's sitting in position I'm going to draw those two sections of wire very close together down at the base until they sit side by side. So you can have a small amount of space just above that loop to make sure that that's nice and secure. But we're just aiming to sit that securely in position. So once these two wires sit parallel, we're going to draw the bell shaped bead cap down over the top and it sits flush to the very top of that beautiful purple and gold gilded lamp down at the base. We've now got two wires that are coming up through the top of the bell, so I'm going to take one of those and turn it at right angles to one side. And I'm just going to leave that hanging around until I bring the top bead back down and add in, you've guessed it, another wrapped loop. So I'm just going to turn the uh, pliers up the other way so I don't interfere with this right angle bend at the side and again I've gone through your wrapped loops quite a lot and I don't want to get you bored but uh, with getting these right it really is all about practice so just turn the first half draw the wire around for the second half and then drop that down so just allowing that to be centralized and giving it a bit of a squish so that it's neat and tidy and happy I'm then going to take that tail around a couple of times for security, but I'm not going to get too close to that glass crystal bead. I'm just going to trim away the excess and save that for my next project. And then just making sure that I tidy that end away without being disrespectful to that beautiful crystal, which has got like two tones of coating on it. It's gorgeous. What we're going to do then is trim any excess over to the side that we feel we don't need. So I'm just going to put a small spiral coming away from the top here. It's almost like a tendril. So I'm going to trim just a little off the end to make sure that I have a nice flat end to work with. So there's no danger of that catching on things. That's one of the reasons we're working in the slightly heavier of our two wires together is because you've got this rogue coil coming out to the side. Now I'm going to bring this up towards me and away from the table. Very, very small movements with your coils. And for this one, I'm going to do an open coil unlike the closed coil which we did down at the base of our head pin technique. So I'm going to do very very small manoeuvres, this is almost an eighth of a turn at a time and I'm applying a great deal of squashing pressure with my dominant hand and just pushing that around so that the gap is approximately the same. If it varies slightly I really wouldn't worry about it. Don't 
fret too much so it's gone slightly narrower there so all I'm going to do is bring that back out a little bit if this is a struggle for you an alternative technique is to use the pliers to make that shape for you by bringing them underneath once you're happy with the size of that open coil what I'm going to do is to I'll probably bring this one down actually so it sits to the side and then let me just borrow a piece of wire from over here when it sits on the final piece it will have that lovely little tendril coming out to one side so let's put that with the row of completed segments and move on to our next piece this is basically two wrapped loops one at either end and then just connecting a charm down at the bottom and using one of these absolutely fabulous focal gorgeously detailed beads as well now you can use whichever wire you like for this because you're going to have enough opportunities to put uh, loops going through so it doesn't have to be the heavier of the two wires all of the charms and the big feature beads do fit on the heavier uh, which is 18 gauge equivalent to one millimeter so if that's your preference that's absolutely fine all we're going to do is load on our focal bead first and then around about an inch from the end we're going to turn a right angle now for this one if you make a very very small loop what can happen is that your leaf charm will get stuck and it might stick out at a jaunty angle and then it might not stay at a jaunty angle so what we're looking to do is to create a slightly larger loop than you imagine you'll need so it's sort of pitfalls like this which are useful to understand as you go through your jewelry making so if i turn the wire underneath this time we're going to make quite a large loop shape and you can see as i form that loop i'm making almost a spiral this time because i've got a larger object to get into position so you can see I've left a larger gap for you there. So add your charm into position and then you can close that up by hand. And then exactly as you have done before, we can create that wrap going around the central core wire. Now, if you struggle to do this with your thumbs and fingers, or if you value your skin in any way, shape or form, which you may well do, probably smart if you do, you can employ a second pair of flat facing pliers just to bring that tail into position so i'm just going to keep scooching and squishing squishing and scooching until that sits neatly sorry about getting the camera there once that is neatly in position you can allow that to drop down and then just complete a wrapped loop up at the top so i'm not going to do the second wrap loop i'm going to move on to the next technique because I don't want you to feel that you're seeing the same thing over and over again. I'm here today with a charm bracelet because each and every one of these can be used independently as earrings or charms or handbag charms or whatever you, even on key rings if they're nice and secure gemstones uh, or good solid beads as these ones are, you can absolutely use them wherever you want to. So I'm not going to finish that now. I'm going to move on to the next technique, which again uses, let me just trim away some wire. We should have got enough just to finish this next number four technique so i'm just going to smooth that wire through to make sure it's heated and smooth like so this is around about three inches which is only just going to be enough if you are working again on the reel we're going to imagine that this is the end that's attached to the reel so we need to pop our lovely little it's not quite a dagger bead but it's it's a, an elongated almost like a briolette with very very large kite shaped facets on it it's absolutely beautiful and again it's in my favorite color so we're threading that on narrow end first fat end towards the action which is just up here and all i'm going to do now is to create an open coil or a closed coil whichever is your preference i think i'll go for a closed coil to match the first one that i made so drawing that wire around until we get that circular form going switch to those flat facing pliers people often ask how to get their coils precise and round and beautiful the answer is a lot of practice and not going too quickly even now after a couple of years let's go working in wire i will still take my time to make those coils don't rush it just give yourself time and give yourself permission to practice anything that you put in the bin 
is learning it's a lesson it's getting better at what you're doing it's never a failure or something that's gone wrong it's just how you're getting better at what you're doing so what I'm going to do is after I've gone round twice for that coil I'm going to put my pliers underneath grip hold of that wire really firmly and draw that coil out so that it sits centrally at the base of that section of wire and then up at the top guess what we have got a wrapped loop now if you really struggle with wrapped loops you can do a very simple open loop I'm just going to put this to one side now and I will complete that section later on the next technique we're going to learn is this one which is another one of those beautiful bell shaped I want to say bead caps two of the smaller filigree bead caps and one of those sultry spacers as well so before the end of today I'm going to finish those off and then I'll show you how to thread them all together I'm sure you know how to thread your beads you are after all my Jesse James beads famalam so this is where we're learning next this is in the twin uh, no it's 18 gauge sorry beg pardon it needs to be 18 gauge because it needs to be sturdy so I'm just going to work off the end of the reel. I'm actually going to work off the end of the reel for a hot moment because I don't know how much wire I need. So in reverse order again, we're going to start up at the top. So that's one of the smaller filigree bead caps. One of my fears when I'm doing lives is that I can't get the bead caps to go on. <laughs> but if you give that a little bit of a waggle, it absolutely will. Then one of those extra plus rondelles and then another second one of those beautiful filigree bead caps before we add in that bell shaped almost Egyptian floral design and then we're just going to scooch those towards the wire which is on the reel still Blop. what we're going to do down here at the bottom is make sure we've got a good sharp finish or a good flat finish rather so that's a really nice side that's already been flush cut so happy days there and to have this one work properly it's super super easy all we're going to do is a medium loop down at the bottom not a wrapped loop this is an open and closable loop so I've created one single circular form of wire if I put my pliers underneath and inside that loop and turn that away what we're doing is creating in essence an eye pin so earlier on we created a disc head pin by creating a coil, crossing over it, and then using the central line to go up the center of those beads. So now we're creating an eye pin together. You can, of course, buy your eye pins. They're all ready made, they're all the same length, and you have to do nothing. But if you need one, I'm going to show you how you can make your own. And I'm going to straighten the wire above that eye pin before I give this a really good squish. Now, when you're using eye pins in jewellery making you will often open and close them as if you were using a jump ring today I just want to give that a squish now you could if you wanted to bring in the world's tiniest steel block and the world's lightest hammer and just give that a bit of strengthening with a hammer and block if you don't have those things what you can do is open and close open and close over that loop until you get that strong and flat once you bring the bell down over the top of that it's imperceptible that it's even in there and then we're going to bring in the other beads that we added earlier on and then up at the top guess what we are going to do we are going to create another wrapped loop so I'm going to pass those pliers at the top push everything down against that loop that we have hidden inside the bell turn a right angle and then cut off an excess so that I can create a wrapped loop off camera in a moment because you don't need to see another one of those and then we're on to our final technique for the charms before I thread everything else up together in a little while so I'm going to get some lovely warmth and heat into this slide on my single focal bead which is this essence of vibrant iris in one bead this massive coated faceted rondelle it's gorgeous so what I'm going to use for this if you don't have um, a specialist tool that makes cones I'm going to show you how you can make something using your round nose pliers so I've added the bead onto the wire and this again is the 18 gauge or one millimeter wire I'm going to make that really smooth really warm 
really straight and flat but also really fluid your coated copper wire will also accept uh, wire warming in this fashion so just get that super toasty and we're going to start off with a small loop to begin with so all the way around and then what I'm going to do is continue using these pliers to start an open loop once I've got that going I'm going to switch it over again to my flat facing pliers and I'm going to generate quite a tight open loop so I want to have a gap going between those wires but not a vast gap so moving those around moving those around it's not a hugely open loop but there's definitely gaps now you can tighten that up as you go if you need to if you've got yourself a cone mandrel all well and good you can use that in the normal way that you would use one I do not have one I had one years ago and it went a while I don't know where it is so I'm going to run around with narrow gaps between each of those lines until I get back to my start point so I'm going to continue moving around opening and closing and I'm giving it a little bit of hardening on that wire as I go so you can see our start point we've gone once twice three times with a gap between those wires now before we do anything else I'm going to give that a couple of little munchy noms with the flat faces of my pliers and then I'm going to use my round nose pliers to create a spiral form so if I put one side of those round nose pliers in the center of that coil we made and what I'm going to do is very gently just tease that helix of wire down until you create this like a, a helical waterfall effect coming up and away so you've taken a spiral and you've made it a 3d spiral then what I'm going to do is remember we've got our start point in the center we've got three passes of wire and then our end point at the last section of the spiral before it leaves and comes away I'm going to support that and bring the wire back across the center of that spiral like so find the middle so above where that center of the spiral sits I'm going to put an upright bend so I'm going to show you that on its side you can open that out a bit further if you want to if you get gaps that are larger on one side than on the other side you can pop in with your other pliers and just manually adjust slightly if you need to and then we're going to re-straighten the wire above bring our focal bead back down into position and then just push that central section up onto the feature bead so you get like a little helix of wire but that is decreasing in size down to a small coil at the bottom and then up at the top we're going to you've guessed it turn a right angle leave ourselves maybe an inch and a half or so of wire to create a wrapped loop so I'm just going to finish a couple of those wrapped loops and then I'll show you the order in which I threaded the rest of those supporting beads onto my uh, fine beading thread so I've just taken a few moments to finish off the wrapped loops at the top of those charm technique designs and I've threaded them onto my beading thread in an alternative fashion to my original piece and I'll show you both of those. Both designs are achievable with a single pack of those beautiful vibrant iris beads from the mini bead mix collection. Let's have a look at where we've got to and just finish off that bracelet. So here's my original design with the original bead order on the bracelet section. You can make that entire piece with one pot from the Vibrant Iris mini bead mix. Let's move that one out of the way for a second. And as an alternative, this is the way I've threaded up the project we made together today. So you've got enough rice beads and oblong beads to be able to make this edge. And as you get four of these gorgeous faceted drops in the collection, you can use them on the band as well as in the charms. So just to finish off, I've already put the bar selection from a toggle and bar clasp uh, component parts on the one end. So I'm just going to add in now a couple of crimps as with most of my jewellery I tend to double up where I possibly can on that beading thread 
and then my jewellery lasts for ages and ages and ages. So I've already got good tension at this end, so I need to be careful that I leave enough space for those crimp beads to sit properly and not make for a stiff bracelet. And I'll show you what I mean if you've never used crimp beads and beading thread before. So you take that through the loop on your toggle clasp and then back through. So I've got double beading thread and double crimps. You don't have to do that with very light jewellery, but I like to, especially when you're moving up to necklaces with multiple bead strands. It does pay to have a little extra strength. So as long as both of your strands have gone back through those crimps, you're going to move that all the way along. Now, if you pull this super tight, what will happen is your bracelet will get really, really tense. And then when you try to draw that around the wrist, your beads will be pressed into each other. Now, not only is that unkind to your beads, it also makes for a slightly more difficult to fasten bracelet. So that leaf is just sitting down in the center on that feature bead. These are all the different designs that we made together today. So what I tend to do is to allow myself a little bit of extra beading thread just on the one end and just bring that down until I feel that this is where I want my crimps to sit. So I think that I will get two crimps in there comfortably and I tend to make sure that that bracelet will bend around first before I press that first crimp into position. So I'm going to be using crimp covers on my crimp beads today, which means I don't want the crimp too tight against the component clasp and I don't want them too tight together. So given that this is the space I'm allowing myself to fit those crimps, I'm just going to sit those in position and then get that first one squashed up. So I need that slightly closer to the toggle before I give that a hearty squish. And then I need to make sure that that second crimp is away from the first crimp. Ideally, they need to be equally spaced throughout the gap that you've allowed. So I'm just going to hold that beading thread down and squash that second crimp making sure that I don't move it around too much as I do that. So let's give that a squish and a squeeze. I've done that in two parts there because I wanted it to grip the beading thread to begin with so that it doesn't move around and then I can give it its final squishes. When I'm ready, I no longer need the cut ends of my beading thread. What I tend to do is pull them away at a very sharp angle, like so, and they hold that position to enable me to cut the correct piece of beading thread. And you can see I'm encompassing that beading thread before I make the snip so that I'm cutting only the correct piece of beading thread. These are still good for making beaded earrings, so they go in my reuse pot. Now, putting a crimp bead cover on is the most nerve-wracking part of life when you're doing a video because it doesn't always go to plan. So let's slide one of those little shapes over the flattened crimp now before I go on, there are two ways that you can make one of these tube crimps work for you. I tend to go for a single squish and in my 11 years of making jewellery I've never had one of these come undone. There is a tool that you can get which is a two-step crimping plier which enables you to fold this over into a squashed C shape. It means that fitting your crimp cover is easier. However, I prefer to leave my crimps flat and use larger crimp bead covers. So I've pushed the crimp bead cover up and over the crimp and I'm supporting that from underneath. So I show you that sideways before I do a two step maneuver. First thing I do is close that up slowly so that it grips onto that flattened crimp. And then I take a couple of moments just to bring those ends together, drawing the pliers over at an angle from either side. And this is the way that works for me. If you find a different way that works better for you, then by all means, do your own variation. Now, when I add this second crimp bead cover in, you'll see that it's very close to that first one. If you squash those crimp beads exactly side by side, you won't then be able to fit crimp bead covers. If you're not using them, it's no drama. It doesn't matter. But if you do want to use them, then you will struggle if you don't leave enough of a gap. So that's ever so slightly on the wonk. So I'm just going to straighten that up before getting that to sit in a more rounded form. So I'm quite happy with that overall. Pop that toggle through the, the clasp assembly there and I'll bring the other one back in. 
what I might do is take a photo of these side by side and leave it to play at the end of today's video uh, so that you can assess if you want to reuse any of those designs in terms of bead order. It really doesn't matter what order your beads go in as long as you are happy with them. I tend to go for smaller beads at the clasp end because I find it more comfortable and then those techniques in the centre. Thank you for joining me for our Vibrant Iris Charm Bracelet collection today. I hope that you enjoy making them as much as I have. Vibrant Iris is a glorious collection available at the .com which is US based and also throughout the UK and Europe from the UK.com site. JessieJamesBeadsUK.com for UK and Europe and jessiejamesbeads.com for the United States and the rest of the world. Have yourself a beautiful day and I'll be back with you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.